Okay, kita sambung tadi eh. Okay, uh, once uh, we introduce our problem statement, we introduce our problem regarding our DV and next we go to the uh, second paragraph. Kalau boleh, you buat paragraph lah. Ni sebab saya gabung ni. Okay, kalau boleh you buat hmm, panjang sikit lah. Ni sebab saya bagi contoh saja. Saya cerita problem. For example, cerita lah problem ni banyak sikit dalam satu paragraph. Kemudian saya dah try, uh, saya dah cerita pasal problem regarding saya punya dependent variable. Kemudian in the second paragraph, saya try to introduce our, saya punya independent variable. Independent variable saya adalah emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence ni apa? Emotional intelligence ni adalah um, ke, kebolehan untuk mengawal emosi. Because people nowadays, they have high high IQ kan. Ada orang ni, dia pandai. Tapi emosi dia macam tengah dia marah, dia tak boleh kawal. So, saya nak tajuk kajian berdasarkan example problem statement ni. Uh, sorry, berdasarkan example research report ni. Saya nak buat kajian impact of emotional intelligence on job performance among CV servant. Saya nak buat kajian di public sector. Saya nak tengok macam mana kebolehan upaya kita mengawal emosi boleh menjadikan prestasi kita meningkat. Okay. So, in a second paragraph, saya introduce saya punya IV. Alah, emotional intelligence ni saya punya, dia punya umbrella tau. Dia ada anak, dia anak dia ada tiga. Sebab saya dah kata dah, independent variable kena ada tiga. So, saya define according to Goldman. Okay, bila you buat ayat, pastikan citation you tak boleh lama. Contohnya, kalau you nak buat yang macam, ni sebab saya guna, ni example research master saya. Dah lama lah kan, sebab tu dah outdated. Bila you nak cited, pastikan you cited yang recent. Kalau boleh, 2012 ke atas. Uh, you nak cari benda. Macam mana you dapat citation yang ni, semua you ambil daripada e-journal. Macam mana tulis. Nanti saya akan upload satu video, ajar you macam mana kita nak cari journal. Okay, kalau definition, kalau definition, for definition, you are allowed to cited orang yang lama. Scholar yang lama. Contohnya, organizational culture by Shin. You kenal tak Shin? 1950. Dia define organizational culture. Definition kita boleh cited scholar daripada lama. Sebab they, they are established scholar. Ha, dia adalah kata proponent, pelopo. Ha, dia boleh. Kita boleh cited buat citation lama. Tapi untuk overall, untuk fakta-fakta, saya kalau boleh saya tak nak tengok you cited tahun 1994. Please avoid for Beva student, it is very important for you kena provide more citation yang latest citation. Kalau boleh, latest lah. Kalau boleh lah. Kalau boleh, 2015 above. Latest citation eh. Make sure your citation. Kemudian, saya define emotional intelligence ni. Kita sambung balik. According to Goldman, they define IV dia. Goldman ni memang established scholar dalam bidang emotional intelligence. Kemudian saya ceritakan sikit emotional intelligence can help to improve job performance. Nampak ni? Saya dah try link dengan DV saya. Contohnya saya nak buat kajian pasal impact of factor influence work stress. Uh, sorry, saya sejak cakap pasal work stress. Okay, factor influence work stress. Contohnya work stress among employee has increased semua-semua cerita-cerita. Kemudian there are there are several factor that affect work stress. Saya nak introduce saya punya independent. For example, leaderships. Saya define lah. Leadership is apa? Faktor yang kedua, uh, technologies. Okay, saya define teknologi. Saya cerita teknologi apa? Faktor yang ketiga, apa? Saya define faktor tu cerita. Uh, maknanya lepas saya cerita DV, saya perkenalkan saya punya IV. Kita ada tiga IV kan? Maka kita perkenalkan tiga-tiga IV. Kita bagi definition saja. Sebab kita tak payah cerita, kita cerita tak payah cerita banyak. Sebab yang lain kita akan explain dalam chapter 2. Okay, therefore, kita nak tutup ayat dia. Ayat untuk introduction. Therefore, this study primary aim to study the relationship between emotional intelligence and job performance in Jabatan Negeri, Angkutan Negara Raya, Negeri Selangor. So, you tutup you tutup statement introduction ni, ni introduction part ni dengan menyatakan research objective you secara general. For example, therefore, this study aim to examine the influence, the factor that influence online purchasing behavior among students in UITM Seremban. Full stop. Uh, as you can see, that is, dia kena must be synchronized. Maknanya setiap paragraph tu, you ikut guideline ni, must be synchronized. So, you finish section 1.1 introduction. Boleh ya? 
Okay, now problem segment. Tadi saya dah ajar in a lecture slide. Problem segment ni apa kan? Permasalahan kajian. So, how... Okay. Tengok eh. Instruction. One page description of the problem that is focus of this proposed study provide data or support existence and seriousness of the problem. Keep in mind the symptom. Okay. Okay, problem faced by the sample population. For example, pornography among UITM students. Already told you during lecture, in previous video, saya cakap setiap kajian kena ada masalah. Contohnya, saya nak buat kajian dekat UITM. Pornografi. Pornografi berlaku dalam UITM, among UITM student? Ada kan? Okay, sexual harassment among Asia employee. Ada? Perhaps ada. Corruption in JPJ? Ada kan pernah berlaku kes. Ha, itu maksud dia problem yang dihadapi oleh sample population. Contohnya, uh, 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 okay, contohnya lah kan. Uh, you cari artikel ni. Contohnya tajuk ni. Uh, uh, ni tak apalah dia buat orang Malaysia yang kaji. Contohnya saya cakap lah. Contohnya jumpa uh, factor influence stress. Tapi kajian tu artikel tu adalah orang barat. Contohnya Robert yang membuat kajian di Australia. Kalau uh, you nak apply kajian ni. Pastikan you apply pada sample yang ada masalah. Contohnya work stress. So, sorry, I bagi example. Contohnya corruption. Uh, kajian tu dijalankan di barat. Bila you nak apply kat Malaysia, normally correction berlaku kat mana? Maybe enforcement agency. Itu sample you, maybe factor influence corruption amongst uh, immigration worker uh, in Malaysia. Uh, pastikan tajuk tu kalau you nak apply, pastikan make sense. Your sample population must be back sent with your title. Okay, continue back with the problem statement. Okay, this is guideline on how to write good problem statement. Okay, for example, let's imagine your title is the influence of emotional intelligence on job performance of employee at JPJ Selangor. First guideline stated the problem in a general statement. Okay, maksud dia untuk uh, you nak start paragraph, you kena define problem tu Secara general, jangan masuk dalam Malaysia. For example, a survey of American employee revealed that many employee who work out for organization lack of motivation pasal job performance and to keep learn and improve their job. Four out of ten worker are not able to work. Means secara general, survey by American survey in a Latin America in globally across the globe, corruption is ah uh, secara general. Mean you start your paragraph secara general. Paragraph pertama. Okay, masuk paragraph kedua, baru you stated problem from Malaysian setting. In Malaysia, ah uh, no, you use the word in Malaysia. In Malaysia. Uh, public complaint bureau reported about apa masalah dalam negara kemudian stated the problem based on your sample But niche you niche kan problem contohnya saya nak buat kajian pasal performance uh, among jabatan pengangkutan jalan JPJ employee so next the researcher identify that the problem also occur in our unit analysis which is jabatan pengangkutan jalan Uh, lepas tu, you conclude ayat dia. You conclude. Conclude the problem statement. Recognizing this problem, this research aim to help this agency. Ah, uh, Dia perkenalkan balik variable. Maknanya dia tutup ayat dia. Okay, ni yang tadi tu kita separatekan dia kan. Yang ini adalah combination semua dalam bersatu ayat. Uh, maknanya, kita kena ada flow lah. Bila you nak tulis problem statement, mula-mula you cerita masalah tu secara general. Satu dunia. Ha, lepas tu, you masuk dalam Malaysia. Paragraf seterusnya, you masuk pada sample you. Kemudian, you tutup paragraf you dengan berperkenalkan balik. Uh, you punya objektif secara general. So, you nampak synchro, synchronize. Bila orang baca report you, nampak sedap. Flow ayat tu sedap. Okay, I hope you all faham lah macam mana nak tulis problem statement. You boleh tengok, you boleh tengok ni. Ingat ni, problem statement, you kena cerita pasal masalah-masalah variable you. Masalah-masalah kajian you. Contohnya, you nak buat pasal obesity, factor influence obesity among Malaysian citizen. So, you cerita masalah-masalah pasal obesity. For example, number of obesity telah 
meningkat, uh, unhealthy diet, and then the rate of death, uh, cerita-cerita, bukti-bukti yang menunjukkan bahawa kajian you ni ada, you nak mengkaji masalah, tajuk you. Okay. Next, research question. Okay, research question. Kita orang yang saya cakap ni, terbalikkan research objective menjadi question statement. Sebab saya dah ajar tadi dalam slide. Research question adalah reflection research objective. Research objective, okay, saya, saya nak buat semua orang buat uh, research objective yang sama. Okay. Okay, boleh tak edit kejap. Okay, saya buang ni lah senang cerita bagi tak pening. Okay. okay, research question adalah dalam bentuk soalan. Research objective adalah statement kan? Okay, tolong buangkan yang ni. Buangkan yang ni. Okay, kalau you tengok. Okay, memandangkan you all semua ada 3 IV dengan 1 DV. Research objective you kena ada 3. Hmm. To examine. Ha, ni contoh eh. You all kena ada satu template yang sama eh. To examine. To examine the influence. The influence of IV first on DV. To examine. To examine the influence of IV2 on DV. To examine the influence of IV3 on DV. Okay, this is your research objective. I want that all group must have same research objective. Okay, berdasarkan tajuk tema kajian masing-masing, so you isi je template ni, pastikan you ada tiga. Contohnya, kajian you nak tengok to examine the influence of price on online shopping behavior. To examine the influence of brand on online shopping behavior. To online shopping behavior. For example, kajian lain. Okay, ini ikut kajian masing-masing yang I dah approve eh. Contohnya, uh, ni lah. Contohnya, yang ni pun ada kawan kamu cari. The factor influence academic performance. Saya pergi dekat model dia. Okay, macam ni kan model ni. So, saya nak kaji. IV pertama adalah to examine the factor, the influence of communication on student performance. To examine the influence of learning facility on student performance. To examine the learning, uh, the influence of proper guide on student performance. Saya ambil tiga saja. So, saya masukkan dalam template ni. Lepas tu, untuk research question, kita buat dalam bullet. Bullet form je. Macam ni. Uh, you tulis ni. Lepas tu, yang ni untuk research question, you copy paste balik, letak kat sini. Tapi, you buat dalam bentuk soalan. Is there any relationship between IV pertama and DV? Is there any relationship between IV kedua and DV? And is there any relationship between IV ketiga and DV? So, you jadikan dia soalan. Dalam macam ni. Just, just simple macam ni je. Statement macam ni saja. Okay, boleh ya buat ni. Okay, scope of study. Tadi saya dah ajar kan dekat slide. Scope of study, okay, saya bagi contoh. You boleh edit ni. Boleh edit je statement ni. The study will conducted to, for example, saya nak buat factor influence obesity. The study will be conducted to uh, student in UI and Semeremban. Okay, kita fokus pada level uh, which focus on only on the final year student uh, of bachelor degree of administrative science. Full stop. Okay. The study also we focus on evaluating the influence of uh, Okay, selepas tu Tadi saya nak kaji factor influence obesity kan So, saya nyatakan specific independent variable saja. The study only focus on the influence of poor diet uh, Physical exercise and friends on obesity Ha, saya nyatakan 3 IV. Saya beritahu 3 IV tersebut adalah apa? Maknanya saya hanya kaji 3 faktor tersebut terhadap DV. Faktor lain saya tak kaji. Itu maksud dia. Boleh gunakan template ni. Significant of the proposed study saya dah ajar tadi. Kita buat dalam subtitle. Contohnya obesity among students significant to the university. Saya explain. The study can help university significant to the faculty of administrative science significant to the student ha dia ikut dia ikut tajuk kajiannya sebab tajuk kajian you all berbeza ha significant ni saya dah ajar tadi significant is impact kajian kamu setelah siap kemudian definition of term terminology concept definition ni adalah definition variable kamu contohnya saya bagi definition emotional intelligence 
apa. Okey, definition ni saya nak you letak in a definition section adalah definition variable kamu IV dan DV. Contohnya, tajan saya nak kaji the influence of brand, price and uh, brand price dengan apa. Contohlah, brand price dengan uh, uh, quality on purchasing, fashion purchasing. So, saya letak definition brand. Brand, saya letak brand can be defined as apa. Okay, price can be defined as apa. Quality can be defined as apa. Kemudian, purchasing behavior can be defined as apa. Okay, untuk pengatang kamu, for this section, actually kita ambil je daripada artikel tu. You pergi je ke artikel tu. Artikel tu dah ada letak dah definition. Contoh, ah, contohnya macam ni. Ha, contohnya, saya pergi kat bahagian literature review, student performance. DV saya student performance. Galia and Darling use GPA. So, saya copy je lah maksud student performance adalah berdasarkan, saya copy je. Saya pergi kat sini, saya letaklah student performance, saya copy paste. Hmm, saya betulkan lah ikut format dia. Kita boleh copy paste. Ha, untuk definition, you boleh ambil je copy paste. Sebab definition tak apa. Eh. Definition you tak, tak perlu paraphrase dah. Haa. Tak apa, untuk bahagian ni you, dia bukan plagiarism eh, sebab definition memang kita tak boleh bagi definition kita sendiri. Definition contohnya organizational culture. Takkan kita nak bagi definition sebab kita bukan sekolah. Definition kita boleh ambil copy paste sebiji ayat sekolah, kita boleh paste. Tapi paste kat sini, tapi tak definition tak payah banyak eh. Sikit je definition yang kompresi, yang senang faham. Contohnya organization culture can be refer to apa. Ha, comprehensive lah. Da jangan definition tu terlampau simple. Contohnya, stress refer to the uh, imbalance in emotion. Ha, that's example. Ha, definition macam tu tak comprehensive. You kena cari definition yang comprehensive. Contohnya, stress can be refer as a inability to manage emotion due to apa. Dia kena definition is something yang comprehensive. Ingat for definition, you just define you punya variable saja. Eh? You define independent variable, define your dependent variable. So, there's it's uh, for chapter 1. Itu saja. Yang you perlu complete uh, untuk tempoh 2 minggu. Saya tak nak panjang saya. Saya tak, kalau boleh jangan no can don't exit from 10 pages. Times New Roman 1.5. Chapter 1 not more than 10 pages. Not less than 5 pages. Okay. That's all. If you tak faham-faham, tak faham apa-apa, boleh whatsapp saya. Thank you.